with that, we've finished the four main assumptions for identifiability. And we'll just leave you with these four questions to recall the important aspects of what we just covered. Now that we've gone through these four main assumptions, let's tie them all together in a proof to identify the average treatment effect. Right off the bat, we need to use the no interference assumption to justify that these potential outcomes are only a function of one's own treatment and no other individual's treatment. Then we use linearity of expectation to get this. This isn't an assumption. And we use the law of iterated expectations to get this. Importantly, this will help us apply conditional exchangeability. Now we can use conditional exchangeability or unconfoundedness and positivity. This is the really important step here. So because we've already conditioned on X, we can introduce treatment behind the conditioning bar. And finally, we use consistency. We were using this a lot throughout the lecture without saying it was consistency. Now we're going to make it clear that this is where we actually apply consistency to say that the potential outcome yt given capital T equals little t is equal to the outcome, the observed outcome, given capital T equals little t.